All right, Bob, viewers of the Bob and Brad program, and anyone else who's watching, we're going to discuss chest pain and the most common causes and if you can safely self-treat. So hold on a few seconds. We'll be right with the program. And I'll think they must wrong with. Absolutely. Right. We're going to take this serious. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. All right, chest pain, obviously, Bob, we know it's a big red flag. Right. You don't mess around with it. Uh, and if you're not, know why. It's because you potentially may be having a heart attack. Right. Obviously, potentially fatal. Uh, so you must see your doctor or go to the ER if you are having chest pain. But we're going to go through some more reasons why. Because actually, I looked this up, and actually the majority of people who go to the ER with chest pain are not, not having a heart attack. But you still should go. You have to go. Right, you have it, to go. if it is, your life is How many times have you gone, Ben? I've gone in three times with chest right. pain. And we'll talk about that a little bit right. more and explain to you how I figured out how to uh, take care of that. So here we go. We'll get on with number one. One of the causes for that chest pain could be this is uh, GERD, G-E-R-D. It stands for gastroesophageal reflex disease. Impressive, Brad. Or heartburn. Right. Simply that you have the reflex backing up through your stomach into your throat or your esophagus. Not fun. No, it's not fun. And uh, it's something that doesn't matter. You, ne you need to have this addressed anyways. Yeah. So if you go to the yard. Get on in there. Yep. Yeah, and so you're going to get things uh going on the right track one way or another. Uh, number two, there's certain things with lung disease, particularly uh, with the, uh, I'm not going to get into it because I, I may say it wrong, but right. there are lung problems that can cause chest pain. Uh, and again. I know the upper lobes can cause pain into the shoulder. Sure. Right. Which is common, especially if it's the left one. That's, that's one of the. Right. Areas where a referral from heart pain right. or a heart attack can go into that left arm or shoulder. Uh, number three, uh, stomach issues like ulcers can refer pain up into the chest. Uh, you need to get that taken care of one right. way or another. Again, every reason to go in. Yes. So it doesn't matter if you're going in and it's, right. and it's not a heart attack. You Which still good. need to get the problem addressed. Right. Uh, so it's a good thing overall. Uh, and the last one, is which I experienced. Right. Like several said, times. Several times is if the, uh, the doctor would say you have musculoskeletal problems. Now, right. the first time I went in with chest pain, almost 10 years ago, that's what the doctor said after they kept me all night, sure. all night long on uh, EKG and this and that and the other thing. And I said, musculoskeletal, I think. Ah, I'm a physical therapist. I should know what this is. Right. <laughs> but I had no answer at the time, and neither did the doctor specifically. He said, that's just what it is. We don't really know why you're having this pain, uh, but you can go home. It's not a heart attack. Uh, so we're going to talk about how this occurs, because there's a number of people who may be diagnosed with this, and we'll show you what it is more specifically. Very good. All right. Bob, we've gone through this before, but we're going to go through it again. We have yep. this musculoskeletal disorder or problem that's causing chest pain. And believe me, it's not fun. I, I felt it. And it I think, can be severe. Yeah, and it's like I'm thinking, am I really having a heart attack or right. is this this musculoskeletal thing? So after some research, I found a gentleman. His name is Steve August. He's a physical right. therapist in New Zealand. Yeah. He had, He's a great guy. Yeah, he found out his chest pain was as a result of something called costo costochondritis. Yep, costochondritis. And better yet, he learned or he discovered a way to yep. treat it, self-treat it well, successfully. Well, does it well. Right. Seven years, he had chest pain, and then he discovered this simple treatment. Uh, one thing that you can do, and doctors have done this on me, but I, I think a lot of doctors are not really familiar with costochondritis, right. at least the ones I worked with. They would palpate like where the rib connects to the sternum because that's where the point of irritation is. And they said, does that hurt? Does that hurt? And kind of like that. And I said, no. And then I went home after doing some research. They pushed hard. I did a more detailed right. 
uh, palpation, if you will, and I would find, and consistently, there would be one spot the size of a dime where I'd hit, and boy, it sent me through the roof. It's like, ow, that hurts. Hello, so Brad. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that's one thing that may not, may or may not hard. be there. Right. Um, but anyways, that is one of the signs signs of right. costochondritis. Very common. Right. So uh, long story short, uh, Steve has invented a device. It's called a back pod. You can use something like a softball, a softball to right. treat. But what we're going to do is show you briefly on Sam why you get right. this pain in the chest. Okay, the explanation of why we get this chest pain from costochondritis is if you look at the back where the ribs connect to the vertebra or the transverse process, uh, there is a joint at each level. When you breathe, your ribs literally go up and they go down and right here, that rib needs to float and actually articulate or move up and, and move. down. Now what happens is these ribs, where the joint is, they tighten up, they contract, and they... It's like they become rusty. Yeah, they become rusty, and they do not move, right. but your ribs still want to move when you breathe. Right. So what happens as a result of the no lack of motion here, the motion is made up in Too the Too much front. motion. Yes. So be where the ribs connect up to the sternum, it gets excessive Hyper motion. Mobile. Yep. And uh, that is where you have inflammation and the excess motion creates right. pain. And that's where you do that palpation and you, and you hit that sore spot, it makes you really feel it. And it uh, So hurts. if we loosen up these, it, it loosens up and puts not as much trust right. on this. Yep. We break this up, get it moving again, right. and the ribs can freely move Ooh. as they're supposed to, right. eliminating the pain. We'll show you how to do that next. Okay, here's the device that Steve uh, invented. It's called the back pod. Uh, and we're gonna put this side of the back pod, the sphere part, and it's not gonna go in the center. It's gonna go off to the side between the shoulder blade and the vertebra, and we're gonna work it at different levels of the back, not standing, I'll do this lying down. If you do not have one of these, which you probably don't, you can use something like a softball. softball. Uh, you'll probably want to take a towel because it's a little aggressive, as well as this. We'll show you that in a second. <laughs> All right, here's the technique. And now again, you can use uh, a softball or maybe a hard ball, maybe a tennis ball. A tennis ball would probably be too soft. But we put it there, and to start out with, I would take a towel like this, and cushion it because it's a little aggressive if you haven't done it before or the ball like this. Right. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to lie down. Now, my pain is always on the right side on the lower ribs. Right there it starts and it radiates this direction. So I actually work my right side of the ribs just to the right of the spine, and I'll lift up like this. And when you start, you may have a pillow, and you'll kind of go gently on this. After you get used to it, and it may take a, a couple, three weeks, then you can start, and Steve says, more pressure, get those ribs mobilized. Also bring your arms up like yep. this. I remember the one video he emailed. He says, make sure you yeah. flex the shoulders. So I start doing that, too. So I'll, I'll go back like this, and I actually rock on it like this. You want to break up those yeah. rusty hinges. Yep. Got to get those ribs mobilized and right. get that. And now I'll work down on one side. I, I go four locations now, Bob. Sure. I think you do this yeah. three locations, right? Uh, well, probably six. Oh, but I, oh, on each side. Right. Yep, yep. So Bob uses this thing not for, for posture, right? Because it's really good to get that thoracic back to extend and standing. And there are other uses for the back pod besides this. Um, again, if you're using a ball, it's the same thing. But I would probably fold this up a little bit more because it's a little more aggressive. But it will. Ooh, it's really not that bad. Ooh, wow. really? <laughs> oh man, I got that baby to crack there. Uh. Oh. Yes. I think it is bad. The back pod works better. This is right. the next best thing. All right. So there, there you, go. you go. Make sure you work both sides of the back. Don't just Again, do one. Again, we want to make sure you go in. Yes, go in. Check, get check it, it out. Get things confirmed. I went in 
My third time, I was like, I didn't want to go in, but my wife made me. And again, they said it was musculoskeletal. <laughs> <laughs>